Shalom to the elect of the nation of Israel. It's another edition of the Daily Edification Exhortation. Comes to you through the spirit and power of Yahweh Baal Shem, Yahweh Shai Baal Shem, Rekakwadash. All praises and glories definitely do, especially in these times. Yeah, so earlier I was watching this video here by um, Elder Apostle Taha entitled The Controversy over the 12 tribe sign and the only reason it's a controversy to certain individuals who were once in the truth and now are questioning you know for whatever reason which is usually the first signs of them falling out of the truth questioning something like this one of the main signs <laughs> pun intended one of the main signs to show that we're the Israelites, they start questioning that. That's a sign that they're, they're losing faith. And the only reason it's a controversy to them is because just that, they're losing faith. And pursuant to Ephesians 2 and 8, which I have the, script, the scripture here, what does it say? Ephesians 2 and 8, it says, For by grace are ye saved through faith. Through faith. And what's the definition of faith? Hebrews 11, chapter, the first verse. All right, go and read that. I mean, I could pull it up and read it, but no, I want you to go and read it. You got to do some work too. Those of you that are new to this. This thing of ours is totally, I've always said this throughout the years. This thing of ours is totally built upon faith. Totally built upon faith, man. And it's a gift. I'm reading it right here. Let me read it again. Ephesians 2 and 8. By the way, these are the words of the Apostle Paul written to the Israelites in Ephesus, which was a parish or province of Greece, the, the, the Greek kingdom. Okay? Apostle Paul wrote those words. You had a group of Israelites, a church, if you will, which the word church from the Greek ecclesia, which means called out. You had a group of Israelites that were called out to the truth, just like we were called out. And the Apostle Paul, being the head of the church in the spirit, wrote those letters to them. And we're reading one of these letters now, the letter to the Ephesians, which were Israelites living in Ephesus. They call themselves Ephesians, right? For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. So we can't boast in this thing of ours. <laughs> you know, anyone that's boasting in this thing of ours, that means that they, uh, their understanding of this truth is very small okay it's very small you know as the apostle paul beautifully said and i love the way he said it by the grace of the heavenly father i am what i am that's basically what he said i am what i am by the by the grace of the heavenly father i feel the same way i am what i am by the grace of the heavenly father which was shown to me many years ago more than 30 years ago okay uh, and that none of yourselves, and that not of yourselves, it is the, here's the point, it is the gift of the Heavenly Father. So, so faith is a gift of the Heavenly Father. And to believe in this sign, to totally believe into it, is faith. It's based upon faith. So anyone that's questioning it, or, ha or, or sees a controversy over it, lacks faith. They lack the greatest gift that you can get from the Heavenly Father, which is the gift of faith. It's as simple as that. I always tell you about wisdom. Wisdom is not complicated. Wisdom is not complicated. Wisdom is simple. One and one is two. Two and two is four. Four and four is eight. Eight and eight is 16. What's complicated about that? Nothing. Straightforward. And another thing with wisdom, it's straightforward. It's like an arrow, like an archer that shoots an arrow. <laughs> hits, hits the target right straight to the point. There you go. So... If there's any controversy over this sign, is because, uh, as it, and again, it is written, all men have not the faith. Let me, well, let me see if I can get that scripture. All men, bear with me for a minute. Let's see if it comes up. Yeah, there we go. Second Thessalonians. This time is the church in Thessalonica, another province of Greece. Got to know that history. 
2 Thessalonians 3, 1 and 2, Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified even as it is with you. And that we, here's the point, and that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men. Unreasonable and wicked men. Some men you just can't reason with. You just can't reason. No matter what you say, you can't reason with them because they're incapable of processing reason. Okay? So you can't reason with them. They're un, they're, they come under the category of being unreasonable. And that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men, and, and i.e. they're wicked. For all men, here's the point, for all men have not faith. For all men have not faith. For all men have not faith. What is faith? It is the gift of the Heavenly Father. And it takes faith to believe in the sign. It takes faith. And you know, the, the point is, when we're in camp, there are things that happen that enhances our faith in the sign. Let me share one thing with you. Even little children, when they come up to the camp, the first thing they zero in on, and we've seen that time and time again, the first thing they zero, on, zero in on is the sign. That's the first thing they look at. And you know what they do? They look to see if they're on the sign. And if they see themselves on the sign, they go, I'm on that sign. That's me right there of the tribe of Simeon, of the tribe of Levi. I'm a Haitian. I'm of the tribe of Levi. That's spiritual, man. That's not by coincidence. That's spiritual. This thing of ours is based upon, th based upon faith. This thing of ours is spiritual. Okay? It's spiritual. The scriptures speak about being spiritual, don't it? Well, there you go. So you have to have a spiritual mind to comprehend this truth. You can't have a carnal mind. So that was the first scripture, Ephesians 2 and 8. The next one, Hebrews 4 and 2. Well, let me start the first verse. The point is really in the second verse. Let us therefore, I don't want to make this video too long. Let us therefore fear at least the promise being left to us of entering into his rest. Because we're going to get rest in the kingdom. Boy, we're going to get rest in the kingdom. Entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. A lot of guys are going to come short of that rest. Why? Because they lack faith. Questioning the sign. The main thing that the Heavenly Father gave us to gather us together as a nation. You guys are always talking about the nation, right? Oh, here's the, one of the main signs, pun intended again, to gather us as a nation. And you going to question it? <laughs> and like Elder Apostle said in this video, if you're going to question the sign, then you're going to question everything. It's just going to go down the line because you're going to wax worse and worse until you become a full-blown reprobate, Okay. Simple as that, man. I always tell you, wisdom is simple, man. It's not complicated. Anyway, Hebrews 4 and 2 now. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them, but the word preached did not profit them. The word preached did not profit certain individuals. Why? Not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. So they never got the gift of faith. They heard the word. But they never got the gift of faith to cement the word, to put it together. So it's no, it's, no, it's not, what's the word I'm looking for? It's not, uh, it's not amazing that, lack of a better word, it's not amazing that they don't believe. Because they never got the gift of faith. They heard the word, but you need that special gift of faith to cement the word. So it sticks with you, Right? Just like somebody takes cement and put it to a brick to make the brick stick with another brick. If you think of all of us brothers as bricks, what holds us together? What cements us together? Faith. Okay? A gift of faith. A little something called faith. Okay? Let's go to the next scripture. Like I said, I want to make this video too long. He, uh, Deuteronomy 28 and 45. Check this out. Now, just like the sign is a sign for us that who we are, our nationality... Well, so are the curses. Deuteronomy 28 and 45. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be destroyed. And we're under the curses now. Okay? 
The only one that can liberate us from those curses is Yahweh Shai, and he's on his way. Till thou be destroyed, because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy power to keep his commandments and his statutes which I command thee, and they shall be, listen good, and they shall be upon thee for a sign, the curses. So that's another sign, beside the actual sign of who we are, our nationality, according to the Bible, not according to the so-called white man. It's, it's amazing. These morons, they have, a, they have a problem believing this sign, but they have no problem believing this, the, the crap that we learn from the so-called white man about our nationality. Black and Afro-American and colored and all that bullshit. They have, excuse my language, they have no problem believing that. Because secretly, deep down inside, they believe in the so-called white man. They look at him as a somebody. Let me tell you something. I look at the so-called white man as a nobody. He's a nobody. Okay, that's how I look at him, as a nobody, as a pile of dog shit. That's how I look at him. Okay? Because I know what the scriptures say about him. And I know who he is according to the Bible. Okay? Anyway, Deuteronomy 28 and 45. Moreover, all these curses come up shall come upon thee, and shall pursue thee, and overtake thee, till thou be destroyed, because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy power, to keep his commandments, and his statutes, which I command thee, and they shall be upon thee for a sign, what is the day, the curses, and for a wonder, and upon thy seed forever, even to this very day. So, the reason why I brought out this scripture is, not only is the sign a sign unto us, but so are the curses. Okay? Next one. Ezekiel 37. And uh, let's start at 15. The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Moreover, thou son of man, take thee one stick. In the Hebrew, is, I believe it's aitazah, which means plank. Plank of wood. And that's it's spiritual because every time we do the sign, it's always on wood. All right? Sometimes we laminate it. So the rain, you know, the, the elements don't affect it. Anyway, used to be on cardboard. We used to put it on cardboard. Moreover, thou, which cardboard came from where? It came from wood, right? Moreover, thou son of man, take thee one stick and write upon it for Judah and for, his, and for the children of Israel, his companions, that's all the other tribes. Then take another stick and write upon it for Joseph, which represents Ephraim, the stick of Ephraim, and for all the house of Israel and his companions, 12 tribes. And join them one to another into one stick. That's that sign. All right. And like Elder Apostatar said in his video, Ezekiel back then didn't carry no sign. We knew we were Israelites back then. We didn't no, need no sign to wake us up to our nationality. So what time period is this talking about? It's talking about right now. We have the sign. Then you have these jackasses who have no faith questioning the sign. It is what it is. And join them one to another into one stick, and they shall become one in thine hand. One sign. What prophecy fits this? And then you have these guys, right? They knock the sign, but they can't produce one plausible result in knocking the sign. Okay, I, you knock the sign. All right. You show us the real sign then. You give us the real sign that was given to High Priest Ariah. All these years ago. You know what it is? You're jealous, man. You're jealous of a man you don't even know. High priest Arya. The knowledge was given to him. Let's leave it at that. He's a prophet of the Lord. Let's leave it at that. He was given a great sign. Pun intended again. Let's leave it at that. All right? Uh, Ezekiel 37 and 17. And join them one to another into one stick. And they shall become one in thine hand. And when the children, now listen to this. This is what we see all the time. Every time we're out there on the street and we're teaching, the first thing people, when they come up to us and listen, the first thing they look at is that sign. It never fails. And I know because I'm out there and I see it all the time. You know, one thing about us, we're observant, man. Your apostles, your elders, we're very observant individuals. <laughs> you better believe it. And when the children of thy people shall speak unto thee, saying, they come up and they want to know about that sign, saying, will thou not show unto us what thou meanest by these? Meaning, what, what, what's up with the sign? How come I'm not on the sign? Some people ask that question. I'm not on the sign. Or they might say, oh, I'm on the sign. I'm of the tribe of Judah. And then they start getting all happy. You know how many times we've seen this? 
Say unto them, Thus saith the Lord Power, Behold, I will take the stick of Joseph, the sign, which is in the hand of Ephraim. Joseph represents Ephraim. And the tribes of Israel, his fellows, the tribes, and will put them with him, even with the stick of Judah, one sign. And make them one stick, one sign. And they shall be one in mine hand. And that ain't talking about back then, because back then, this is the captivity. When this was given to Ezekiel, this is the captivity of the Babylonian Empire. When this was given to Ezekiel, we knew we were Israelites. We didn't need no goddamn sign. All right? <laughs> yeah, I'm a little upset. We didn't need no sign. Okay? Now, we need the sign. Because our people are totally lost. They have lost their identity, nationality. They need a sign to bring them back to their right mind. How about that? They need a sign to bring them back to their right mind. Now chew on that for a little bit. Marinate on that for a little bit. Savor it. <laughs> uh, here's Matthew. Matthew, the fourth chapter. Right? Matthew, the fourth chapter, the 16th verse. The people which sat in darkness, our people, saw great light. This sign is a great light in the land of darkness. This sign is a great light because it leads you to your identity, to your nationality. We've been lied to by the so-called white man. He's called us all kind of names under the book. Negro, colored, black. Come on, man. This is our true nationality. Again, Matthew 4 and 16. <clears throat> Excuse me. The people which sat in darkness saw great light, and to them which sat in the region and shadow of death, light is sprung up. It is light is sprung up, as it is written. Light has come into the world, but men love darkness rather than light. You start questioning that sign, you're heading for darkness, my friend. <laughs> you're heading for darkness, gross darkness. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to be in no darkness. I've been in. I've been in the darkness, like the, the song from uh, Jimmy Cliff, I've Been Dead 400 Years. Check that song out, the reggae song, Jimmy Cliff, I've Been Dead for 400. I've been dead, man. Now I'm alive. Another song by Chicago, I Am Alive Again. Check that out. <laughs> I Am Alive Again. Okay? That's a bad song, too. You know me about the music. Like I said, when I teach, if, if, if a song comes up that's appropriate to the lesson, I'm, I'm going to throw it in there because I love music, okay? It is what it is. Finally, 2 Thessalonians, well, I did read that, okay? I did read that, but I'll read it again. 2 Thessalonians 3 and 2, and that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men. So eventually we will be totally delivered from them because they're going to be destroyed. They ain't going to be around. You start questioning that sign and you start going in hard body on the sign like some fucking moron. You're going to be destroyed. Proverbs uh, Proverbs uh, 13 and 13. He that despises the word shall what? Be destroyed. So eventually you're going to be destroyed. Okay? Second Thessalonians 3 and 2. And that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men. For all men have not the faith. Or have not faith. There you go. It's all about that faith, baby. All about that faith. It's a gift. Ephesians 2 and 8. You see it right there? It's a gift from the Heavenly Father. So Barakatha Yahweh, Bar Shem Yahweh Shai, Barakatha Yahweh, Wa Yahweh Shai, for giving us this faith. All right? Barakatha Yahweh, Barakatha Yahweh Shai, Barakatha Yahweh, Barakatha Yahweh Shai, Barakatha Yahweh, Barakatha Yahweh Shai. That is Hebrew for bless the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son for giving us this faith. Okay? So with that, I'll say Shalom. Next one.